ISO FileMaker Magazine, the professional's resource for FileMaker know-how. Well, hello there, my fellow FileMaker learners. This is Matt Petrowski bringing you these tutorial videos from my website, FileMakerMagazine.com. In this wonderful video, we're going to be taking a look at, yet again, some naming conventions. This is just an update on the conventions that I use. Every once in a while, I like to cover these topics, and maybe you will pick up a hint or a tip that might make your development in FileMaker a little bit easier. All right, so typically when I start off a new video, what I do is I go and search the magazine website for any other times that I've covered that particular video. You can see right here, I've gone into the search area on the magazine website. You can actually just use the search that is right here. And I searched for the keyword conventions. Now, when, we, when I came back with a number of results, I tend to cover this every once in a while. It looks like the last time that I had covered it was right here with development standards, and that was in 2013. And it was about 10 years ago that I created a website called FileMakerStandards.org. You can see FileMaker coding conventions right there. Now, what I cover in this video is going to be roughly similar, but it has some updates in terms of the new changes that I'm making to the way that I'm defining my fields. I'm being a little bit more strict, We'll take a look at that. Scrolling down even more, I had some original stuff in 2008. Now that website that I released in 2010 was this right here is filemakerstandards.org. Now at that website, you're going to find a, it's a wiki style uh, site where all of the information here was me outlining how I was coding then, how I still code now, although I've updated them and I need to update this website, but there were also significant contributions by others, such as uh, Jeremy Bonte, uh, Perrin Smith, uh, Dan Smith, and a number of other prolific contributors in the world of FileMaker. But here we're here to see the standards. So let's jump into those. As I hide the browser, switch over to FileMaker, we're going to be using a database that I use in order to store my code. It's called FM Recipes, and I never formally released it, but it's just a way that I keep all of my code. I'll need to release it at some point in time. But the standards that we're talking about are the conventions that you use when you're coding. And I'm going to tell you why I use the ones that I use. So the first place we're going to head is into Manage Database. Now here, the best thing that I can say is that Choose a method where you're going to view your fields. How you view things is what determines how easy and how willing or unwilling you are to go in and maintain your own database. Because as a FileMaker solution grows, or any software for that matter, it grows into a bit of a mess. Now, we can use creation order, not super useful. We could use field type, sometimes useful, and we could use custom order. I have in the past used custom order, but these days I'm just using sort by field name. Now, this is a setting that you should set prior to uploading a file. It doesn't mean that you can't change it, but FileMaker remembers what the setting is so that every time you come into the defined database, at least the first time after opening a hosted solution, it will go to whatever the last setting was when the file was not hosted. So if it's not hosted, set it to field name, if that's what you're choosing, and then host the file. So now let's talk about the naming that I'm using or the updates. So here we can see that I am using a system which is lower camel case. And by that, pretty much the only uh, field name is this one right here, source URL, where we get lower case to start off with and then a uppercase, and then it's usually it's camel case. In this case, URL is a, a word that would be all uppercase. Now, why do I choose this format? The reason that I choose this format is because within calculations, it becomes much easier to identify a field as opposed to a function. If we go, for example, into, let's go into ID here, and we'll just access the calculation dialog box. That's the only reason I'm going in here is just to get into the calculation dialog box. So we are looking to differentiate things within FileMaker. And when I start to type in, uh, let's say for example, if or get or any of these other functions that we have right here, all of these functions start with title camel case. So we've got title camel case. So I wanna be able to differentiate from FileMaker's functions. Now, as we'll see, when we look at the naming of my functions, I like to name my functions the same way that FileMaker names its own functions. So for example, 
I believe in here. Let's get out of this dialog and we'll get out of that and get out of that. Zoom out and open up the um, the manage custom functions. That's where I am. I've gone to the manage area over here and then right here manage custom functions. So we're in that dialog. So here you can see that I'm using the same type of format of a uh, title camel case. Now the question becomes, uh, there's a really good one in fact, a good example that I can show you as we go into a calculation again. And I'll do that by going into a, this time I'm using a data viewer uh, calculate, uh, expression, a watch variable is what it's called, just to access the calculation engine. So here, get as a URL encoded. Now FileMaker has this one function. And one of the things that some developers, we're talking about custom functions, don't like to do is they don't like to name functions the same as a FileMaker function because they are worried that FileMaker will introduce those functions. Now here's why I do not have the concern. And the reason that I'm using this as an example is because there is a really nice custom function that I use called get as URL decoded because FileMaker decided not to include that. So let's cancel that. I'm going to switch over to Safari again, go to the Brian Dunning website, and here is the function that I like to use, get as URL decoded right there by Alex Zweb. Now we'll have to talk about this at symbol right here and using identifiers. In fact, it's very important because I've got a number of questions that I've had because I choose to use the tilde within the context of a let function. In this case, um, Alex is choosing to use the at symbol as a indicator of a custom function. Now, I don't like that because it makes it actually hard to find uh, when you are searching. In fact, I have a FileMaker database, and when I search for just this word decoded, it will not find the word decoded within a full string that is does not include spaces. In other words, FileMaker search engine will not allow you to find, find that. However, it will allow you to find things using a wildcard. That would be putting an asterisk in front of the D for decoded and an asterisk after the D for decoded. And it would find it within this string of a function. Now, it's a very specific case, but the at symbol also is another issue that prevents some type of searching functionality. And that's just because I put all of my custom functions from Brian Dunning's website and other websites into a FileMaker database, making it easier for me to copy and paste custom functions. You'll have to look for that in another video. So let's go ahead and pop this in. I'll copy all of this, and then we'll go put this into uh, this database. I'll open up the manage custom functions and we'll go ahead and throw this one in here. I'll copy the prototype. I will not take the at symbol in this case and I will put the URL as a, val a parameter and the counter as a parameter and then I believe I will need to modify this right here by taking off the at symbol in order for this to resolve. One more of them and one more right there I can see. There we go. Alright so when we look at that example again, so let's go ahead and zoom into our expression and we'll put get as URL. We can see that we have the two different variants. Now prior to FileMaker adding in these little icons, FileMaker did not used to have these icons, there would have been no ability to distinguish between which is a custom function and which is a regular function. And getting back to that issue about developers being concerned, if in the next version release of FileMaker, we're currently at 18 when I'm shooting this video, FileMaker decides to release FileMaker 19 and they include a get as URL decoded, the reason that I am not concerned about naming this function and then having what's known as a collision because FileMaker has the same function as what I've named is internally this custom function has an ID. FileMaker will attempt to do its best to resolve that but prior to even opening the database in FileMaker 19 or whatever the next version is, I'm going to go through their list of changes that they have made. As the developer, if I have seen that they are adding a new function that clashes with my own, then yes, I'm going to go in and possibly, probably, rename mine. Now, this does become a problem when you have inherited a database and you're not the primary developer and you have no idea what's going on. So in that case, maybe you choose a different convention. 
So when we look at the different conventions, as we cancel out of this, and we'll go back over to that Brian Dunning website, when we look at uh, just clicking on the newest functions here on the Brian Dunning website, and by the way, when you go to the Brian Dunning website, Brian Dunning used to be a FileMaker developer, but then he got into uh, some other areas. If you just go to briandunning.com, it will be just a picture of Brian Dunning. And you will not be able to access this unless you add the uh, URL of FileMaker custom functions to the end. So this full URL is a URL you need to go to. It just ended up being one of the de facto default places where people would put custom functions. And they're still doing it today. In fact, a lot of them are added. But we look at custom function naming here. And you can see we've got a lot of people that are doing title camel case, which is pretty cool. But we've got some people that like to prefix with CF, telling them that this is an, uh, a custom function, or they use these prefixes. Now, I have been clear in the past I am not a fan of using prefixes, and this will particularly apply to fields, and we'll take a look. Also, we have two different people here. It looks like Oliver and Alex, both like using the at symbol in order to identify a custom function. Again, I'm not a fan just because it doesn't fit within FileMaker's environment such that when you're writing code, I know that title case are typically going to be functions. And I don't care whether it's an internal FileMaker function or whether it's a custom function. So hiding that window, let's now address fields and talk about those prefixes and why I don't like them. Um, we will close this, go into our defined database, and we'll go into our fields. Now the reason that I don't like prefixes is because I find that it's just as easy to make a field easily understood by using a very clear prefix. In fact, I didn't used to do it as much, but I'm doing it a lot more now. You can see that both here and then when we switch over to this ingredients right here. I'm being very explicit and very clear about what a field is and how it applies. And I also do the same with summary fields. So let's go back to the recipes. So in this regard, what we can see is I have very clearly lower camel case are all of my data fields. Now the next thing that I do, rather than using, say for example, um, a prefix, which a prefix for some developers would look like this, if you're not uh, clear. Um, let's say they'd have a calculated timestamp, uh, who knows, whatever. Um, and then sometimes they'll do like calculated number global unstored. This to me becomes really ugly, CNGU. If I go into somebody else's FileMaker database and I have to start thinking, calculated okay maybe it's number yeah I can get global what is you what are they trying to do then I have to go and actually look at the field itself and what its settings are and whether it's unstored or what it is or isn't so I opt for this very clear method of being able to say what is a field in terms of naming that field such that you clearly identify what it is so I have started to do this. This is a modification to my own standards. I already chose to use the standard of all uppercase for anything that is what's considered memory resident value. So in FileMaker, a global field in particular is resident in memory for the specific logged in user. In other words, a global field is not shared across all of the clients when connected to FileMaker. So I decided to make that all uppercase, and it applies to the other areas where it is also global in nature. That means that in a global variable um, within a, uh, let's go back over to our data viewer. If you're not familiar and you're new within FileMaker, a global variable is like this. I will name that on purpose uppercase. Now there is no difference between those two, whether it's lowercase, uppercase, or what have you. FileMaker is case insensitive in terms of its programming. So this does not differ from this right here or from the all uppercase version. These are to FileMaker exactly the same. In fact, all of them are all the same. 
and that's very important to understand. So it becomes important that your naming gives you the clear distinction between what is what and where it fits in. So next, let's move on to the naming and how I name things or how I have been naming things. Now it used to be that when it came to um, a good example of this are all of my creation and modification fields. It used to be that I was naming things according to the uh, just created by or created on or um, creation uh, timestamp. And what I decided was it's much better to group things and that's because FileMaker, when we have our choice of options, FileMaker in most all cases presents things to us in an alphabetical sorted order according to their names. That means when we're making selections in layout mode of a field, in fact, let's take a look right now. We'll go into layout mode here on this file. We'll double click on this field as if we're going to reassign and look at that. We do not even get to control. There is no way to control the ordering of these fields because it is controlled by that setting over in the Manage Database. In fact, let's go switch it over really quickly. Let's switch it to Custom Order, and we'll say OK. We'll double click, and we can see that that order is being applied here in Layout Mode when we are making our selection. Now, this is very difficult to choose from. As I scan this list, or as you scan this list, I've got ID, then I've got this nice grouping right here of all the timestamps. And it would be nice to see this prefixed grouping of all these globals. And then at the bottom, all unstored. It makes it much easier for me to pick out all of my fields by using a reverse or a more generic down to more specific naming convention. So what that means is if I was, and I didn't want to do that change, but we'll switch, switch that back. If I was creating a FileMaker database where I'm going to have a first name, I'm not going to put spaces there. I'm going to use my convention of first name, but the better choice is to put all of them into the order of name first or go in reverse and then have name last, at least in my opinion, because of the grouping and the grouping makes it easier. And we're going to see with table occurrences, it applies as well. So. Let's go back in and let's sort this by field name and see what I've done. So all global fields, not only are they all uppercase in my solutions, but I am also prefixing them with global underscore. Also, when it comes to unstored calculations, we can see that all unstored calculations are going to be the name of the calculation, and then they are going to have the prefix of unstored. I am also capitalizing my unstored calculations because they are non-modifiable. Um, a global field is modifiable. I haven't thought of a way to distinguish that this is not modifiable other than recognizing quite clearly that when it has the prefix of unstored, I know it's a calculation. So it's pretty obvious. I don't think, I don't, I haven't come up with a reason that I need to come up with some other identification. I know that unstored identifies it as a calculation as opposed to what is going to identify it as a global. So those sorting becomes really popular. So let's take a look at something over in the Macintosh operating system. Let's click over here. Let's see if I can get that to come up and show my preferences. So let's look at regular computing, what happens in uh, a lot of computing. In a lot of computing, in Java, in other languages, um, everything starts from general and goes to specific and it's I don't know if it's because of the grouping, but it's something that makes it much easier. I can see right here that com is the, canon it's the canonical root domain of what would be apple.com, but they do this in reverse. This is my preferences folder, by the way. You can see right there, it's in my uh, computer. And we can see that what it does is it groups everything from the most general down to something more specific. So I can see I've got all of Apple's items are all grouped here together, and then I get down to the specific. This same approach works within your database, and I suggest that you use it. So when we take a look at the database again, which we've already seen, don't want that, I wanted here and I wanted this, we are going to see that that grouping becomes really, really useful. So where does this apply now to uh, table occurrences? Let's talk about that. 
Table occurrences, and the reason that I'm using this database, table occurrences, their naming and their groups become notoriously difficult within all FileMaker solutions. What I do is, again, just like with those globals and just like with the unstored, I want to be as explicit as possible. So you can see right here that I have a table occurrence that I've chosen to name with the prefix of layout. I am clearly identifying that it is a layout. Now what that does is when we select from table occurrences, it will group all layouts together. After that, what I do is I'm going to attempt to use the base table, which is the name always at the end of a table occurrence, and I'm going to use that as a prefix for all other table occurrences within a solution or within a table uh, occurrence group, this being the group of table occurrences. Now, in this case, I have not done that because this database was absolutely extremely simple. It has just these three in order to show its user interface. This is nothing close to a complex FileMaker solution, but let's change this into something that would be a complex uh, FileMaker solution. I would rename this to recipes. I believe that's what I have. Yep, plural right there. Recipes with a space with a portal. Now, whether you use this character or not is up to you. The chevron is something that I like to use because when I'm looking at a FileMaker calculation, it makes it very clear that what comes after this, which is going to be the field name, it, it makes it very clear of where I'm coming from in terms of fields. I can see by reading that we have the base table, ingredients, double colon, then the name of the field. I know for 100% sure that this field is coming from the ingredients table. But my context, in other words, what is this table occurrence connected to is identified by the prefix right here. Now the prefix, if you keep this consistent within a table occurrence group, what happens with the sorting of all of these? Again, because we don't control the sorting or the presentation of table occurrences, FileMaker chooses alphabetical for us. So alphabetical means it's going to group all of them together, which is super, super helpful and makes your solution really clean. In this case, I've got to get rid of that, which cannot be part of a table occurrence name. So that means that we're simply just going to follow suit. So as I drag this out, this is going to be recipes current. Now, whether or not you use that, the, the space is really up to you. Many times I don't want to use the space. In fact, I'd probably take this off. Um, you can use the space. FileMaker is extremely forgiven because behind the scenes, all FileMaker is doing is using um, IDs in order to identify these. So the spaces don't really hurt, but from a practice standpoint, I tend to not like to use spaces. So let's take a look at how this will look when we're making our selection of our related fields. So here where we're specifying our field, we can see that what happens is FileMaker already does a grouping for us, a preliminary grouping, and that is into these two categories of related versus unrelated tables. But many times you're making a selection where you don't already have this breakdown of related versus unrelated uh, within scripting and other areas. You're just having to go to the area that you want to choose. What makes this easy is the fact that everything is now grouped together and sorted such that it's all together and that whole table occurrence group all operates as a large unit. And that's just because of the naming conventions that we've chosen to use by using the prefix first of the name of whatever the situation is. It can be the table that you're connected to, which in this case, it's what ingredients is connected to recipes and ingredients is connected to recipes again here with some additional clarification of whatever, whatever the area of influence is. So these are the conventions that I'm currently using for most of what I am doing. When it comes to variables and other things, you're going to find more information on FileMakerStandards.org. Um, I just wanted to provide more insight, provide the updates that I'm actually using, which are these right here, uh, globals. You will also see within my, uh, and the um, reverse notation being more specific about that. You'll also see that in this, there is one table in particular that 
even with tables, I follow suit. If I'm going to have a table that is dedica dedicated to only hold globals, I'm still going to follow my own conventions. Even though all of these fields are in the globals table, what it's going to read is globals global clipboard. And I don't know how you can get much more clear than that when you're looking at your calculation code and you see those variables. Now finally, uh, before I wrap this video up, I want to address um, some questions with regards to the characters that you use within things such as a let function. So I'll type in an FM, uh, an expansion tool that I have right there, which I type in FM let, and it automatically expands out my own version of a let function as opposed to typing in just the let function and letting FileMaker put that in. I like my much more clear format. Now you can see right here that I have this little tilde character. The tilde character, I've had a couple of newer FileMaker developers ask me, I haven't seen this anywhere in FileMaker, what is this? This is simply just a naming convention. And the only reason for this convention is for clarity's sake to know what is what. So if I'm calculating a calculation where, let's say, for example, I'm going to select my recipe current ingredients, and I'm going to choose my delta, I can see that it's a field called delta coming from ingredients where recipe current is my context. And I let's say I'm going to concatenate that to a custom function. Let's put in our get as um, URL decoded right there. I know that this is a function. This is not going to make sense, by the way. Uh, URL is, you know, just put in blah right here, and counter will put in zero. When I start to create this calculation, many times, in fact, if I'm writing this calculation and let's concatenate in a literal value right here, Many times my whole goal is to make this easy to read, and your goal is to make it easy to read as well, provide comments, etc. In this case, I have gone past the point where FileMaker allows me to read this, and line endings becomes a difficult topic. In fact, I'm going to hide this right there, and okay. I can read that long extra line, but we can read things in blocks much easier. So for example, with concatenations, I choose to maybe maybe do something like this, which makes it much easier to read this. I can see that I'm uh, combining the delta with a uh, decoded URL with a literal value. Much, much easier to read. But once I start to uh, involve all of these variables if I had if I did not use the tilde what I would have is something that looks maybe very similar to a field name so right there even though that's legitimate code I can't really distinguish this as being different from a field name and my whole goal is clarity so by using the tilde as a prefix I can now very clearly see and visually make the correlation that this is coming from this. That means this is what's falling into that right there. So the reason that I use the tilde is that I use the at sign for a table name designation, or excuse me, a layout name designation. And if you've seen any of my other videos, then you know that the at designation uh, is for me a developer layout. It's something that only the developer sees, only the developer interacts with, and you can see that in the define, uh, the manage database as well. So I won't go into that right now. Um, I don't need to keep this right here for any reason. I've made my point on that. Let's go ahead and see those. We'll go to relationships, and there you can see them right there. Developer tables for me, I had decided on the at symbol as a prefix for my developer tables, and because of that, I'm not going to use it in the rest of my code. At symbol also is something that you sort of want to be careful of because it has so many other meanings out in the rest of the world. In particular, it's either attribution or it's referencing or call, saying to another person, hey, I'm going to at you. I'm, you know, on Twitter, it's at this person. On Slack, it's at that person and so forth. So I don't like to use it because it has meanings in other areas, whereas things like the tilde um, can do that for you. One final note. Uh, we'll go back into that data viewer and we'll take a look at that let function again. Some developers um, have chosen to use the underscore as the prefix. Um, 
So you have that right there where your variable becomes a little bit easier to read. The reason that I don't use the underscore is because for me, the underscore is a word separator. You saw me using that with my global fields and unstored uh, calculated fields, and I want to leave that as a word separator. I don't want to use that underscore as a new designator for something else, so that means that I'm going to use the tilde. Now, is the tilde hard to use? Yes, you have to hold down the shift and type the little tilde, but big deal. It's not that much more effort in order to use the tilde as opposed to the underscore when it comes to your variables, at least when it comes to the clarity and the ability to read your own code. So, this has been the uh, conventions that I have been using lately, getting more specific, doing a reverse naming, and then also just trying to group everything together, knowing that FileMaker does that grouping. And when you name everything within your table occurrences, within the same group with the same prefix, that grouping really starts to help out. Now, it doesn't matter to me if you want to go and, and uh, swap this out, and maybe you start to use double underscores because some people, some developers, they get concerned that, oh, I can't use those spaces and I can't use that particular character right there, the she double chevron, because that won't work for SQL. I've always made the argument that I will probably never intercombine my table occurrences and use them with different technologies. If I am going to use table occurrences for the purpose of SQL or somewhere else, unless you're using external um, an external relationship and you're connecting things, which FileMaker will work just fine if you've uh, connected in a uh, Microsoft SQL server or MySQL or whatever it is, FileMaker will work with these. It's just that when you try to make outside calls into FileMaker, you get into some issues. I will most commonly have a separate table occurrence that I will use for dedicated for SQL. And that's where I will move to something where I will use something that can be supported by SQL if I need to make uh, references to that. I like to segment and separate things out. FileMaker stays within FileMaker, makes it easier for FileMaker. External stuff gets its own dedicated table occurrences and stuff. Is it double management? Maybe you see that as double management. For me, the technologies usually differ enough that I'm not so concerned about a small amount of overlapping code that is the same. So that's going to wrap up this video. Though That's an update to the naming conventions that I use, why I use them, and why those things might help you out with your own FileMaker development. Remember, FileMaker is very flexible and very easy to rename things unless you have coded literal uh, code around values. Otherwise, go ahead, try renaming these and name them so that it works for you. So this has been a video that helps you learn more about FileMaker. My name is Matt Petrowski, wishing you best of luck with your own FileMaker development. And until next time, happy FileMaking. We hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial, and we'd like to say thank you for your subscription and your support. If you're not already a subscriber, head on over to www.filemakermagazine.com slash subscribe for more information about the benefits of joining.